Hey gang, it's Jason Dean with Joe Blow, and I wanted to tell you about this cool new movie called Bad Turn Worse, out at theaters right now and in the iTunes store. Bad Turn Worse is this harsh story about jealousy and desperation during a heist gone wrong. Now you know we're all about movies here at the Joe Blue Movie Network and we like to recognize new talent when it shows up and this movie's got it all. But don't take our word for it, click here right now for the trailer for Bad Turn Worse and let us know what you think. Oh, uh, what's in the box? Hey everybody, it's Jason Dean with the Joe Blow Movie Network and we're celebrating the release of Horrible Bosses 2 this week by counting down the top 10 worst movie bosses. Here we go. Number 10 is a tough one to follow since he's the devil himself. And I suppose even worse, he's played by Al Pacino. I mean, wow. Kudos to that casting director. So Keanu Reeves is a no-scruples lawyer who will do anything to win a case, and he unwittingly literally makes a deal with the devil so that he basically will never lose. If Satan himself lands at number 10 on our list, you can only imagine how much worse it's going to get. Dabney Coleman stops in at number 9 in an 80s mega hit 9 to 5. There's people who are bad bosses, sure, but then there's a special kind of hell for those bosses who are just nasty, perverted sleazeballs who wake up every day to come in and make wild eyes at female co-workers. That's pretty much who Dabney Coleman is towards all three of the female leads in this movie, but don't worry, he gets his from them. And then some. If you haven't seen it, it's worth a watch. At number eight, we meet Michael Douglas as the infamous Gordon Gecko in the Oliver Stone-directed film Wall Street. Now, sometimes a bad boss can be made even worse by an overly aggressive admirer. At that point, sometimes the lines blur a bit in deciding who is worse, the boss or the employee. Such is the case when Charlie Sheen hooks up with Michael Douglas for some of the most underhanded and conniving insider trading you will ever see in a movie. Number seven is another version of Scrooge who is made to see the errors of his ways and finally share the wealth with his workers for the holidays. In this case, one of those workers happens to be Clark Griswold. It's not every day that a comedy sequel was as funny if not better than the original, but I think a lot of people might claim Christmas Vacation is their favorite of the Griswold movies. The boss in question is Frank Shirley, whom gets kidnapped by Cousin Eddie, but after hijinks ensue, we find out he believes he is wrong and decides to give Clark his much-needed Christmas bonus plus some. When someone makes a bet that completely jeopardizes your livelihood and your entire way of life, that's pretty evil. But it's a completely different level when that bet is made between your bosses. That's what happens to Dan Aykroyd who ends up having his entire life swapped with Eddie Murphy in the John Landis film Trading Places landing at number six. The two finally come to terms with the whole thing and work together for mutual benefit and the revenge is oh so sweeter when they realize the original bet that changed both their lives was for just one dollar. There's a lot of terrible people to work for out there, and we've already discussed Satan being one of them, but have you ever thought what it would be like to work for a Sith Lord? I mean, the guy is feeding you all kinds of nonsense all the time, and when you think you are finally making headway with him, he tells a prospective employee to kill you and take your job. I mean, damn. That's pretty much what happened in Return of the Jedi here at number five. Can you believe we can keep getting worse? Number four is American Psycho, where your boss is actually a deranged serial killer and typically is only moments away from killing you. This of course would only happen after he kills some other employees and co-workers, which happens right here in this film. Christian Bale really sells us on the hidden psychopath inside even the most normal and successful seeming people, and that helps to remind us that not everything is as it seems around us. Number three is one for the ladies. It's the best-selling novel turned film, The Devil Wears Prada. We've actually had the devil himself already on our list, but this movie shows how a regular human being can be so brutal that she actually seems worse than the portrayal of the devil earlier in our list. In contrast to some of the other bosses on this list, Meryl Streep plays the fashion magazine editor-in-chief as a bone-chillingly cold individual who consistently puts poor Anne Hathaway in a constant sense of humiliation with nothing but a glance. Now when I first got this list, I thought I was gonna have to come in and do it on Saturday. But then again, I don't work for Gary Cole, AKA Bill Lumberg. Office Space lands at number two, and not just because this movie is a fan favorite, but because this guy really exists. 
Sure, he's no devil or Sith Lord or psychopath, but he really is one of the most realistic parodies of the typical middle management boss from the 90s era of corporate America. And that's why he is so scary, because he's so damn relatable and realistic. If you've ever had a corporate job, we have all met an equivalent of Bill Lumberg somewhere along the way. And our number one worst movie boss is Kevin Spacey from the extremely low budget movie Swimming with Sharks. The movie was made in 1994 with a budget of just $700,000 and was one of Kevin Spacey's first roles after coming off the mega hits of Seven and The Usual Suspects. Why Joe Blow chose this as our number one movie is not just because it's a great movie with Kevin Spacey as a brutal and sadistic boss, but because the movie is about the Hollywood industry which we can relate to. In fact, the movie was written to be based on the real life relationship between the mega producer in real life, Joel Silver, and his assistant, Alan Schechter. No wonder it was so hard to get financed. And that wraps up this week's Joe Blow Top 10. Remember, our lists are always subjective and based on the opinions of the Joe Blow staff. So be sure to add to our list with your own choices below in the comments and compare your choices to others. I want to hear from you, so chime in and start a discussion. I'm Jason Dean. See you next time, and thanks for watching.